Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about some of the nuts and bolts underneath Sampler's hood inside Logic. This is uh, really a chance to look at some of the brand new cool technologies that Apple put inside. And we're not going to compare this at this point to other samplers because I know there's some amazing samplers out there and ones that you may prefer to use or have used for many years. Really, we just want to look at what's new inside the Apple ecosystem partially so you can see if it's something that you want to switch over to for all of your sampling needs or perhaps you can still see what you have that currently does more it's not saying that sampler does everything under the sun but it does what it does now at an extremely high level and is very powerful there's only a couple things that i would even still wish it to have we may get to those but we're going to do a full in-depth video next week on sampler going from creating an instrument at the very beginning all the way through to being able to use it on a song. So today we're looking at some of the, the real pillars, the new technologies which have been incorporated, and then we'll get to the deep dive next week, all about Sampler. Okay, so we're going to be taking a little closer look at some of the newest features inside Sampler as compared with the EXS24. So we have them... We have them side by side right now. We can actually look and see exactly what's different. I was surprised that at some things that I thought for sure were new in Sampler, but really weren't. One example of that would be inside the group area, when we get to decide how they're actually played or triggered. So for instance, let's do, let's look at the view, group, list columns. So enable by articulation, by bend, channel, control, note, tempo, and then there's the round robin option. So all of these were put together inside the EXS24 and select group. This was the category for that note, group, control, bend, MIDI channel, articulation, and tempo. I thought for sure, I didn't remember tempo being in here, where that means that if your project tempo slows down, you can actually have it select a different group of samples. So you could actually say, as this, uh, there's a, a slowdown of our tempo, I want you to trigger maybe this, this different drum set that extends out or sustains longer, or if you get faster, that it plays a more staccato, uh, nimble part but it's been there in the previous version as well. So all of these are here. Round Robin, which was really done by the group option here, meaning that if one group plays, then it triggers a switch to the next group and to the next group, that's Round Robin. That's actually extremely easier here inside the new version. So the first thing I'll say that's new with this is that so many of the tasks which are still available in both places are made easier. So now we know it's round robin, we can turn it on, we can then go through here and decide how to do that. We can remove things from the cycle or move to new cycle, etc. But it's really easy to then create a round robin set of groups for an instrument meaning that each time a note is played, it goes through the different samples, and so you don't have the repetition that comes from a sampled instrument where you're triggering the same note every time the note is played. So it's super easy to be able to do a lot of this stuff. In terms of other things, so many things are exactly the same. We have a lot of things in here. The biggest ones being uh, included now are anything to do with flex. So flex is another one of the biggest things that's now available inside the new sampler that we didn't have in the EXS24. For instance, when we're working here, any of these samples we have, we can turn on flex. And so that's kind of cool that we can do that. And it will retime things. We can have it follow the tempo so that if the tempo of the project slows down, Flex will expand it, and if it gets smaller, it will con contract it. We can also set a speed difference. Now, one thing that was pretty cool about the mapping, so we can do this, a lot of the options here with Flex, is that, going back into the zones for a second, 
we have, let me just do one of these so I don't do them all, um, with flex, where did you go? Oh, right here. So I can do flex uh, zone per zone. That means I can turn on flex for a set of zones uh, and I can slow down the speed or increase the speed for individual zones. This means I can take a, a, a drum patch, for instance, say I've got like an orchestral or, a, you know, more of a film oriented drum sample bank. And I can duplicate a set of the zones into a new group. And inside that group, I could set all of the flex times to half speed. That way I can click a MIDI control or a note somewhere for a key switch or even do this with tempo or whatever and set it so that those particular sounds all switch to the halftime sound. So they're, they're bigger, they're stretched out, but they're all using the flex time so it's not just a pitch down. It's just a cool effect that we have really easy access to in programming. And we're going to talk more about that in a second. So obviously any of the, the flex type stuff that's incorporated here is one of the, the real game changers for this particular uh, sampler. Another thing then becomes the zone editing itself. So anytime we have a sample here and we can load them all in uh, if we want, we can create this with the auto sample or whatever, but then we can come through and we have this whole set of editing tools, which we didn't have before. Uh, we didn't have a real easy auto loop or a retune, which will find a good looping position and or you can retune it. Um, I don't, I'm trying to, I was reading the manual trying to figure this out and I didn't have a good sample to really test this with to see if it actually will do a, a more live retune, meaning that if the pitch bend changes throughout the thing, we should look at that here in a few minutes just to see. And we can easily test that with, uh, with a little process that I've been looking at. But we'll get there in a minute. But we have all these other tools here that allow us to very easily edit things. We can do it graphically if we want, setting loop points like this. Um, but then, of course, we can auto loop. And you're going to see sometimes the auto loop function. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's going to find the same basic spot every time. Let's see if we just move this, if it's going to go back. Okay, so it's pretty consistent. It's finding a decent spot. Um, but all this editing stuff, we didn't have any of that editing in here. We could take this and actually do some of that work inside the Logix uh, file editor, but it was super clunky and it didn't really work as well as you would ever hoped it could didn't have a lot of these features. So this right here is one of the biggest parts. Um, back to mapping for a minute. And I found this was interesting because I'm going to select all of this. And I want to come to zones. And I want to do auto map using pitch detection. And I want it to just essentially recreate this instrument using its own thing. So all of these instruments are coming um, from before sampler and they weren't used making, or they weren't created using this technology. And so we can actually come through and reapply it to see if it makes a difference. And I don't know if you can hear that. I actually have two instruments open, one from a different app. So um, it's interesting hearing the new mapping. It sounds good, but it's, it's in like a different range. So it definitely had a change there, but you can do that. You can go through it and actually remap things. Uh, we can do auto mapping of velocities. We can do it from the file names. We can do it from mapping data from audio files or pitch detection. So it's actually going to analyze all of those we can do remapping so there's a lot more of these type of tools uh, which we can do either to one file or by selecting all of them we can do it so we can auto loop all of them if we want to we can optimize loop crossfades 
all of that stuff. We can retune the entire instrument and it'll go through all the notes. So a lot more comprehensive set of these tools here as well. Now, the, the next thing I wanna look at comes up to the modulators. We actually had a decent modulation section before. That's this section here. And I will say that most of the options are still the same. We had articulation IDs already in here, sample select in here, uh, a number of different things. But, and that's actually the mod matrix that was right there. And then the modulators, of course, were, uh, we had the LFOs and the envelopes that are in the bottom section here. We had three LFOs and two envelopes. And I maxed this out. We can now have four, five envelopes and four LFOs. So they've increased what we can do with those. And those all act as sources here um, inside the mod matrix. So now I can do things like LFOs, all four of them, all five of the envelopes. Um, the rest look very similar. I'm not sure. Let's look and see if we have the side chain here. Um, so the source, side chain, yeah. So we have that, all the MIDI controllers. We have the pressure, the release velocity, velocity key, pitch bend. So all of the standard things here we have a randomization. Did we have randomization in the other one? Let's look real quick. Okay, so that's new function. Um, was interested in that to see what we had that was new there. I'm not sure we had pitch bend. But now we have all of the basic MIDI functionalities that we'd ever want. And the targets, of course... Very similar, but there are a few additional things because we have additional features here. Uh, flex speed being one of them. So we can attach flex speed as a target for like an LFO or for a MIDI controller like the mod wheel. That's pretty cool. Uh, all, a lot of these were already there even if you didn't know about them. And then the VIA is going to be a similar list to all the rest. Cool. So... More of the same in this, but more is always better when we're creating complex instruments. And I would say that these are more powerful than the previous ones as well. And so I think we have a lot more power we can do with our modulators and uh, the actual mod matrix. Okay, so what else is there then? I think in terms of this, we've looked, I mean, it's pretty much the same instrument as the EXS24. It obviously looks different and they're like the flex stuff is different, but for the most part, it's very similar in terms of the feature set. So being good or bad, I don't know. I think we're gonna be able to do a lot more editing with this. And because we can actually come through and um, for instance, we could load new audio files, um, and then have things auto mapped inside here. So auto map using pitch detection. We could also um, split, create zones split at silence or at notes. So I could actually really easily use this to record a bunch of files into a single audio file and then split that and create new zones and then map them using the auto, pat, uh, auto um, pitch detection. And then we do a mapping of the velocity and all of, then there's uh, some other things here where we can um, remap if we want to with fill gaps. So if there's any gaps in our instrument, it will automatically stretch across them. Um, some of the other things that are new, like pivot on corner, mirror velocities, we're going to look at the next big video, which some of those are actually really useful, but you're not going to use them all the time. But there's a lot of power here. Okay, so here's what I want to do for a minute. Let's, um, I just want to check the retune option. That was the main thing I wanted to check. So let's do a new software instrument. And we'll solo this out for now. Instrument, 
quick sampler. And the reason I'm going to do quick sampler is because it has a nice little option right here. So I can take my voice and I'm just going to go la and do a little pitch on it. La. Okay. So now because the, the quick sampler goes right into the main sampler. Just going to open that up and have it transition into a full instrument. So let's uh, show my zone. This should be what I just did. La. It sounds like I had a little bit of timing errors there, but we're not going to worry about that. I just want to see. The retune functionality, if it just. Does a tuning amount, so it says what note it is. It had to tune it a little bit. La. Okay, so it doesn't do any kind of over the course of the note tuning, it literally is just setting kind of the root pitch key for that. I just wanted to double check that because I was interested. Um, yeah, interesting that I had so much distortion with that note. It's probably because I'm doing screen recording at the same time. And um, so I'm not completely surprised, but super easy to sample. I think that when you're not doing screen recording, you're going to have fewer issues with that particular thing. I wish, um, just like with Red Matica, we could uh, actually do pitch correction that was over time, um, kind of like with flex pitch. And so I don't, I don't foresee that necessarily happening yet, but that would be a natural extension of this whole new way of thinking about things. Uh, in doing that. So we'll see just what is coming next with some of these things. But I wish La. I wish I would have even tried to do a little bit more of that. Okay, that's it for this today. Just looking at some of these newest feature and comparing to what is in the previous version of the EXS24. You'll see how similar it really is and all the features are primarily the same. But the next video we're doing next week about sampling is going to take you through the creation of a full instrument from auto sampling, which is where we're going to start all the way through to being able to use it. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you're told when that comes out. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this little bit deeper look at the sampler and uh, we will talk next time.